So the first part of this series of short talks um, has the title of Beautiful Questions in Cosmology. So I thought I would show you where we stand in cosmology today and what are these open questions that we have. So we have learned with um, data from different types of experiments from uh, satellites and telescopes all over the world measuring the cosmic microwave background and uh, surveys measuring galaxies and statistics of galaxies that we live uh, in a universe that is composed mainly uh, by these uh, three different components that I'm showing here. If you look at the chart, the color chart, you can see uh, how the energy is distributed in these, these three different components. We learn that we have approximately 5% of ordinary matter, and this is matter that makes up the stuff that we see, stars, planets, galaxies, you, me. Uh, we also learn that we have approximately 27% of cold dark matter, so 80% of the matter itself in the universe. It's something that we cannot see, we don't see, but we learned about its existence from its gravitational effects. And the rest, which is the biggest part of this chart, is what we call dark energy. And dark energy is just a name, really, to uh, a component of the universe that makes it accelerate in recent times. It makes it expand in an accelerated fashion. Uh, we know that we have perturbations, as we talked before, on top of that. We have the cosmic microwave background perturbations, and studying the statistics of this perturbation is how we can learn from the physics of the very early universe. So we made really big progress in measuring all of these parameters, but big questions remain. Uh, can I pass through to the... So these are the big questions that remain. We have a standard model of cosmology known as lambda CDM. The lambda uh, is just a way of naming the dark energy, and CDM is the way in which we name the cold dark matter. However, we don't understand what dark energy is. We don't know the lambda of this lambda CDM standard model of cosmology. We don't know what CDM is. We don't know the particle nature of dark matter. And we really still don't understand the physics of the very early universe. So these are, we have a model. This is a situation in which we have a model that works very well, that fits the data very well. But the physics underlying this model uh, still remains as open questions. The CMB and the early universe, this is the title of the next part of this event. And so I thought for that I would show you a map of the CMB. This is a map of the afterglow uh, that comes from the, the Big Bang. And this is showing the temperature fluctuations of this light that comes from the Big Bang. And by studying the statistical properties of these temperature fluctuations of the photons that are coming from the Big Bang, we can learn about the physics from the very early universe, about the composition of the universe, how much dark matter there is, how much uh, dark energy there is, and how much ordinary matter we have. So, uh, at the very beginning of the universe, it all began by a hot and dense plasma of particles in thermal equilibrium. And as the universe expanded, it cooled, 
and many different physical processes happen. Some of them we don't know, the physics, and some of them we know very well. So we know that 380,000 years after light years, after the Big Bang, uh, the universe had reached the temperature uh, that it needed in order for the protons and electrons that were around to form hydrogen atoms. So at the very beginning, before this period, protons, electrons, photons, the light, uh, was all together. It was like a fluid oscillating together. The, the, the protons and electrons wanted to go down a potential formed by dark matter. And the pressure that the light, these photons exerted, wanted them to go out. So the fluid was going into gravitational potentials and out of gravitational potentials, in and out. And these are the sound waves, the cosmic symphony of the very early universe. When the universe was 380,000 years uh, old, protons and electrons combined into hydrogen atoms, the temperatures were enough for this to happen, and the universe became neutral. So since then, the photons came toward us almost, uh, almost um, conserving entirely this information. So that's why when we look at a map like this, we can think of it as a snapshot of the very early universe, a snapshot of the time in which the universe was behaving as a fluid of protons, electrons, and photons. And by measuring the statistical properties of these temperature fluctuations, we can learn, uh, looking at this sequence of peaks that describe, for example, the power spectrum, the square amplitude of these temperature fluctuations, we can learn how much protons and electrons there were, how much dark matter there is by measuring the amplitude of these peaks, by measuring the position of this peak, the position, the angular position of these peaks, we can measure how much, what was the geometry, what is the geometry of the universe, how much dark energy there is. And by measuring how these peaks are tilted, we can also learn about the physics of the very early universe, what was happening back at the very fraction of a second after the Big Bang. So we arrive to the last part of this series of very brief talks and, and, and music pieces. Uh, and the last part is about gravitational waves. So I thought I would show you this figure over here that represents 13.8 billion years of the universe. Um, so I told you before that by measuring uh, the temperature fluctuations and other properties of these uh, fluctuations, uh, of these photons that come from the Big Bang, we can learn about the composition of the universe and about the physics of the very early universe, the physics of the very fraction of a tiny fraction of a second after the Big Bang. And uh, to explain a little bit more about that, let me uh, introduce you to a standard paradigm that we have in cosmology today, which is the paradigm of inflation. So in order to explain why uh, the temperature of these photons was so similar in regions that are so distant in the sky, scientists came up with a theory to explain this, and it, this is known as, the, as inflation. Uh, so inflation happened, this theory says, that it, it's a period of accelerated expansion right after the Big Bang. 
at a very fraction of a second after the Big Bang, when the universe was smaller than an atom, and it expanded very rapidly. Now, the space-time had small fluctuations at the time, and with this very rapid expansion, these small fluctuations in the space-time, already predicted by the theory of general relativity, expanded, and uh, under this theory, they expanded, and they gave rise to what is known as primordial gravitational waves. So if primordial gravitational waves were to be detected, this would be a smogan of the theory of inflation. Now, how do we go after these primordial gravitational waves? It turns out that these primordial gravitational waves leave an imprint in the way these photons, this light, oscillates. This light is polarized, and by polarized I mean it oscillates in preferential planes, and these gravitational waves leave an imprint in this polarization that the light has. So there are telescopes that are already taking data and are being planned for the future that are going after this specific signature in the cosmic microwave background that it's a type of polarization that would arise from these primordial gravitational waves. What would we learn? We would learn the energy at which this period of inflation happened. And this energy could be very large. This energy could be the largest ever achieved, larger than any, uh, any um, experiment that exists or will exist ever on Earth. So this is a window of very high energies in the very early universe. We can use the cosmic microwave background statistics to learn about 10 to the minus 36 seconds after the Big Bang and learn what kind of physics happened, what was the energy at which this physics was happening. So that's why cosmologists are interested in this uh, primordial gravitational waves. And with that, I will leave you with the musicians for the last part.